it seems like whenever I blink, there is a new database popped up into existence. Granted that each is serving a purpose, but sometimes it can all be a bit overwhelming. So I was pleasantly surprised when SurrealDB came into my radar. It's apparently a very powerful DB and is akin to second coming in cloud database circles. So I was definitely curious. And now it's time for me to explore it and see what the fuss is all about. So whenever I want to explore a particular framework or database, I would first go to the website and see how the documentation is layout and what are the feature sets. So I'll just scroll through this uh, website that they have. Seems like it's dark uh, colored website with colorful text, which is always nice. The headline is pretty catchy as well. Like SurrealDB is, is the ultimate cloud database for tomorrow's application. So expectations are a bit high. I'm definitely curious what it provides here. I will go to these feature sets in a bit more detail in my exploration section. It seems like it has a SQL-like query structure, which would be pretty natural to any MySQL user. It does seem like it's using a very curious syntax here like reverse notations there's a lot of things here okay so it can be a bit overwhelming i wanted to see if they have a uh, if they have some gui uh, for exploring uh, databases that i have already and it seems like it's coming soon so i'll have to wait and see for that there are some testimonials here as well seems like people are loving it and yeah that's what I wanted to see as well so it has some database libraries already so in my case I usually tend to use it with a JavaScript it's good that they have library for that and they also have library for Node.js and um, I don't see react here or ah okay so here here you go so they have JavaScript connectors as well there's one for Ember is anybody using Ember nowadays? <laughs> okay, there's React, there's Vue.js, there's Angular, so it's cool. So let's start installing and exploring it. Okay, so now we are at the documentation section of the website and we want to install the latest SurrealDB in our system. And the current version of the SurrealDB right now is 1.0. 0.0, .0 beta 8 so it's still in beta right now so i don't think it's it would be wise to use this in a production environment but let's go ahead and let's do the okay so installation this is where we want to go so there are, there seems to be two ways either through docker which we can install or we can install on Mac OS. In this case, I would go with this method and I believe uh, we need brew in our system. Uh, so I do have brew installed in my system. So let me uh, copy that command and let me install it here. Okay, so it took a while, but finally it's installed. So let us see if it's working correctly. So we would type surreal help. All right, so it's installed. Now let's check the quick start guide that they have here. So to start the server, we have to run this command. Okay, so starting as a root let's see so let me run it okay so it started now all right so we managed to start the server but now the question is how to connect to the server because they have not yet published their gui tool so you have to look for the alternative way and thankfully there is a way which is easier than just running commands in terminal which is uh, through Postman. Okay, so what I will do is I will basically copy this whole command here. Uh, it's a curl command and I will copy it and I will open my Postman client and I will go to import 
and then I will paste it as a raw text but as you can see it has one variable here so I will just change it to to change and then I will import it okay so if you can see here it has added an authorization as a basic uh, authorization here and then uh, we have headers which uh, has JSON in it and then this is our our variable that we put so what we can do here is we can copy this this variable from here and we can just select here as a raw we we would send a raw body here because if i send it like this it will give me this problem here i will paste it here and let's run it now okay so it's basically giving me this error that is specify a namespace to use and it's giving me this time as well and then status is error so what is this about yeah so they are saying this is what you will get so you have to specify the namespace so here we can define the namespace as a header okay let me go here to the header and let me copy this and also another header for the db i don't believe we have i have not created the test db yet okay so for the rest we don't have to change anything let me try to run it see and we are getting the response as per the guide here so that's pretty cool okay now let's let's run this query just to see if it's working fine so okay so we have to go back to the to the raw query here and i will paste it here the bad thing is that there's no syntax highlighting so we would just get a standard coloring i wish there was a way to change it i will see it but what it's doing here i'm assuming is creating an account and setting name as acme inc and create it as time now so basically okay so you can pass this dynamic function call to generate the time now which is pretty cool let's see what the result so if we run this we should get this result let's see all right so it gave the status okay and it has basically created new table i would say and it's called account and it has also generated the record all right so now that we have surreal db up and running uh, we can start exploring some feature set and what i did was i just went through the feature list and noted down the ones which interested me and some of them are like flexible database apparently it uh, combines like relational uh, sql data tables with like advanced nested fields and arrays and also one thing i'm really interested in which is like you don't need joins to um, get a data from a particular uh, relationship so that's what i'm interested in as well and some graph ql function uh, graph database functionality as well and also it basically promises to like render the apis useless meaning that in in some cases you don't need complicated apis to fetch the data from the database you can just directly do it through the rest so that's pretty cool they also promise real-time live queries which i want to see how it works and also last but not least using js in your query so i think earlier when we were creating that table we saw that example where we were giving a, a, a time function to generate the current timestamp so i wanted to see that in more detail as well so let's get going then all right so we are already here in quick start guide so i wanted to explore a little bit more on how to manipulate and adjust the data 
so we already ran this command here which uh, creates a table called account and it creates a record inside it so it says here that you don't actually need to define a table or a field before inserting a data so that's pretty cool so uh, let's try to select all from accounts like just a standard query here select all from account okay so it fetches the records here so that's pretty cool so by default a random id is assigned if you haven't provided an id but you can always provide an id with the creation of the record so if i copy this here uh, paste it here so see here it's creating a record with an id called john and it's being created under a author table and here we are passing like different details about about that record and this part is cool specifically because what is doing here it's it's joining first name and the last name from i would i guess like the the thing we are passing here and then also here we are creating the timestamp another thing is that we are loosely just defining uh, our integers and booleans here so that's kind of interesting as well so let me run it so it did create a a record here and as you can see that a record has uh, the data that we passed this is the full name coming from john and adams and the id as you can see here is this the one we passed here and now we come to the linking part so let's copy this here what we want to do here basically is to create a table called article and set this data with it but as you can see there's there's something special here so so this particular article is being linked with the author the one we created earlier basically this we are just passing the table name and the id of the record the last value is basically we are trying to link an account as well the one we created and what is doing is pretty cool so it's another uh, select query here and uh, we are selecting a particular account with this name the one we created earlier in the beginning so let me run it okay so now it has created this record and you can see that uh, the account is linked with the account i random id that we created and the author is linked with with the record with the specific id we created okay now we want to query for the data that we just created in this case i'm going to query for the article here okay so it gives me the same record here again so what if we want to um, grab the R data from the article as well as the account let's see what happens when we run this okay so now okay so that's interesting it's basically querying for both of the tables whatever is in inside and then returning the data in same array that's pretty cool so you can basically query for multiple tables but what if we want to query for the data that we we queried for earlier so okay let's see this here okay so i want to get an actual account that we connected with the article so here it's saying that grab me the article where the query age is less than 30 and grab the author and accounts as well with it so let's see what it gets me so yeah it it did the job i get the record here for the account which is connected to the article as well as the author and the author's age is 29 so it's less than 30 and also rest of the data as well for the article so that's pretty cool like with this one query we didn't need to do any joins or anything it just grabbed the data by itself all right so so far we covered installing surreal db in our computer which was pretty easy and then setting up our postman to make queries and secondly we did some basic exploring in order to create a table and joining the tables and fetching the data 
And also we saw some cool features like multi-table fetching in the same query and also all the data related to a particular record in a table. So this has been the first video. In the second video, I'll cover rest of the things that I want to explore here. So guys, so far, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and like my video as well, cause this helped me quite a lot. And thank you for watching.